as built for AutoCAD. Feature data tutorial. Facade damage mapping. Part 1 of 2. Data capture. After this tutorial, you will be able to capture aerial and linear damage, including specific attributes, create links between different types of damage, visualize attributes, and insert a legend. Notice, for demonstration purposes, we will speed the video up in certain areas. If significant changes are made, we will review them and resume the video speed. To be able to work on this tutorial, you need a fully installed version of AutoCAD into which As Built for AutoCAD has been embedded. Now within the As Built Feature Data tab in the Help area, select Tutorials Mapping Tutorial 1. The Drawing Tutorial 1.dwg is now opened. This facade plan was derived from a rectified image. The structure definition has already been prepared. Left of the drawing area, you see the structure view. The structure view consists of three parts, Mapping 1, Object Collector, and Definition. Double-click Mapping 1 to gain access to the mapping data. The classes Mapping Area and Mapping Curve appear. The area underneath Mapping 1 is used for collecting all the feature data. Here you can create new objects of certain classes. The Object Collector may be used to edit several object data at the same time. That is useful when, for example, a large number of objects descriptions or attributes are to be changed in the same way. Also, when the software detects errors during consistency check, those rejected data will be gathered in an Object Collector. Finally, the definition contains all the information of the data structure. It grants access to the change of the mapping structure. That means which data have to be captured and how they are linked. The definition area will be discussed in Part 2 of the tutorial. For this tutorial, we will only cover the Mapping 1 area for collecting feature data. When something gets damaged in a facade, two cases are of particular interest. First is the data, which refer to laminar structures, and second the data, which refers to linear structures like cracks. In the present case, the mapping area combines all data which have a laminar structure. These may be linked to closed AutoCAD polylines, for example. Mapping Curve combines all data that have a linear structure. These will be linked to the AutoCAD curves. Double-click Definition. The classes with their attributes and links are defined and managed here. When you click plus to expand the entry classes, all the defined classes are shown. The mapping area without graphic inherits from base class area. Click Attribute to find the inherited attributes, surface area, and perimeter. The mapping curve, based on curve, inherits from base class curve. Click Attributes to find the inherited attribute length. If you digitize a crack in the plaster using this class, its length will be calculated automatically. When you double-click any symbol, you can either expand or collapse the view. Let's assume that the plastering of an area in the upper right corner of the building is peeling off. This damage should be repaired by the injection of binder. Zoom in to the top right corner of the building. We want to capture a damage area. Therefore, right-click Mapping Area to see the available options. Since the area to be mapped is an isolated area with no boundaries drawn yet, use the option Add Mapping Area, Draw a New. Now the command prompt will ask you for the next steps in the process. Draw a polyline to define the damage area. Right-click to switch from line to arc if necessary. To close the boundary, right-click and select Finish from the context menu. The software prompts for the insertion point for the label of the mapped area. Now click the position within the damage boundary where you want to place the label. In this dialog, select Plaster from the Material drop-down list. Note, you can add a new material type by just typing it and picking the box. If you have a text in your drawing, you can select the text option and pick a text in the drawing that will be your new material choice. Click the right shift operator for the next dialog. Pick the damage intensity by selecting heavily. As before, you can add a new damage choice by typing it and picking the box. Click the right shift operator. Select the measure repair and as before, you have the choice of creating your own. Click the right shift operator. Here you have the choice of typing a text comment. 
For this example, we will leave it blank. Click OK. The boundary that you have drawn previously on the current layer has now been transferred to the predefined layer area boundary. The label with the text Mapping Area 1 and the material plaster has been inserted at the selected position. When you click the label, you can see that it's linked with the structure view. It expands it. When you right-click Mapping Area 1, you can select Show or Highlight to easily find the Mapping Area object in the drawing. You can also display or remove the attributes in the label. Right-click the attribute and select Show in Label. The object ID Mapping Area 1 consisting of the name of the class and number is automatically assigned and is a standard content of the label. It's a key attribute with no duplicates in the drawing. Labels can be manipulated by four grips, just as common AutoCAD elements. Zoom into the label. We have the scaling of box and text, position of the box. The position of the label that stays within the boundary feature area. If placed elsewhere outside the boundary, it will have influence on the automatic consistency check. Ensure that it always stays within the featured boundaries. Click Undo to return the label to the original position. Finally, we have the rotation of the box. Let's add a new damage area. Again, zoom in to the top right corner of the building. We assume there is damage on the entablature. Click the Home tab and select the Line command. Start drawing a line close to define where the damage is. Press or click Enter. The damage will be here in this corner. Right-click Mapping Area. Select Add Mapping Area Inner Point. Now the command prompt will ask you for the next steps in the process. Pick a point. The software automatically finds the area boundary. Add a second point here to add more area to the damage. Press or select Enter to confirm. Finally, you are prompted for the insertion position of the label. Select Stone for Material, Medium for the degree of damage, and Replace for the measure. Click OK. In the Structure view, you will find the Mapping Area 2 with its attributes and surface area. Press Escape to deselect the label. Now a crack in the facade is to be mapped. This line-like element is recorded via the Entry Mapping Curve. Right-click Mapping Curve and select Add Mapping Curve, Draw a New. You are now prompted to draw a polyline. Ensure that the polyline intersects Mapping Area 1. Remember that you can right-click to switch from Line to Arc if necessary. Right-click and select Finish. Pick one point for placing the label. The Object Snap, F3, is quite helpful when selecting the point. On this dialog, you are prompted to characterize the crack. Select, for example, crack width larger or equals to 2 mm. An injection for the measure. Click OK. Now we have a thick red line for visualization. Mapping Curve 1 appears on the Structure view as well. If you collapse the Structure view and select the Mapping Curve 1 label, it will expand the object in the Structure view. To see the measure in the label, right-click Measure Injection and select Show in Label. When you have multiple cracks or damage area that you want to map the same, there is a tool that helps to map more efficiently. Go to the As-Built Feature Data tab and select Fast Recording. Now, in the FarrowFast Capture, select the yellow asterisk command. On this dialog, select Map Curve and click Next. Select Add Map Curve, Draw a New, click Next. Click the attribute value, Crack Width, and then select the ellipse. You can choose if this attribute shall be filled with a default value, user input, or a fixed value. Choose user input so the user can manually define the crack width. Click the attribute value, measure, and then select the ellipsis. Select fixed value and injection. Click next. Now type the name crack injections. Click finish. You can attach the FarrowFast capture to the left panel. To use the command, double click crack injections. Note the command prompt. Zoom into the desired area and start drawing the crack. Right click and select finish. Now select crack width, smaller or equals 2 millimeters. Repeat the process, but this time with a large crack width. Now we will create links.
By looking at the drawing, it is obvious that a crack runs through Mapping Area 1. The structure view does not reflect this yet. Underneath Mapping Area 1, you will find the entry Mapping Area Has Curve marked by a yellow arrow. This is called a link. Its name indicates its meaning. A mapping area will point to all mapping curves that cross it. Such an assignment can be carried out automatically or may be done manually. For example, right-click and select Link with Mapping Curve. We take the automatic approach. When you have the drawing in place, right-click Mapping and select Check Create Consistency. In this dialog, you can configure the consistency check for links, areas, and attributes. Keep the default settings and click OK. Here, it states that the results are successful. Click OK. When you extend the structure view, the linked mapping curve 1 can now be found under the entry Mapping Area Has Curve of Mapping Area 1. To add a legend, right-click the attribute and select Visualization. Here, we can show or hide certain attribute values. See how the colored areas disappear when you hide all values. Repeat the visualization command to turn the visualization on again. Click the Insert Legend button. Zoom out and click beside the drawing to place the legend with all the details. To update the legend after placing it, just make the necessary changes. Click and drag the cursor over the legend and press Delete. Again, select Visualization and click the Insert Legend command. Now click beside the drawing to place the legend with the updates. In this tutorial, you learned how to capture aerial and linear damage, including specific attributes, create links between different types of damage, visualize attributes, and insert a legend. Please watch As Built for AutoCAD Feature Data Tutorial Facade Damage Mapping Part 2 after this. For a detailed description of every command, please refer to the user manual.